Hi, Dave Brown here. Here's a highlight from our show, now with Dave Brown on AMI-tv. The Bank of Canada has cut its key interest rate for the third time this year. Here's what Governor Tiff Macklem had to say. Inflation continues to reflect the push and pull of opposing forces. Overall weakness in the economy continues to pull inflation down. But price pressures in shelter and some other services are holding inflation up. Since the July NPR, the upward forces coming from prices for shelter and some other services have eased slightly. At the same time, the downward pressure coming from excess supply in the economy remains. If inflation continues to ease broadly in line with our July forecast, it is reasonable to expect further cuts in our policy interest rate. You've heard me ranting and raving about all things economy. Let's get some insight from Dr. Ian Lee. Dr. Lee is an associate professor at Carleton's Sprott School of Business. Dr. Lee, thank you once again for making the time this morning. It's my great pleasure, Dave. Generally speaking, what's your reaction to the Bank of Canada's latest announcement? Um, it was it was perfectly expected. The markets anticipated it, um, and and this isn't sort of a alchemy or anything. Um, the Bank of Canada, Tiff Macklem, very distinguished a career public servant, 35 years in Ottawa, switching back and forth between the Bank of Canada and the Ministry of Finance, and culminating as the Deputy Minister of Finance, I believe, and now the Governor of the Bank of Canada. Um, deeply experienced, and he has said repeatedly that the uh, the governing council which is the bank the governor and the five deputy governors that make the decisions are evidence-based so they study as many of us do too like me we study the data like a like a hawk we're studying inflation trend data gdp trend data job creation trend data it's not one single data point mm. one data point does not you know uh, does not determine the year you got to look at the is the trend line going up is it going flat line? Is it going down in any of these metrics? And so then when they look at all of these metrics in totality, what it's showing is, is that the, the, uh, the, the numbers are going south. The numbers are, are reducing. GDP growth rate is reducing. Inflation is reducing because the interest rate increases that they put through worked. I mean, it's a textbook mm. study. I've been talking about this since they put the rates up. And there were a lot of people, surprisingly, who said, no, 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 they're not going to work. That's the old theory from 50 years ago, <laughs> as, if, as if arithmetic changes from one year to the next. Because the logic of interest rates is this simply based on arithmetic. You put the interest rates up and you have less money in your bank account because you're paying more in interest. It's simple as that. So when they cut the rates, so putting rates up is contractionary. It cools the economy because you have less money in your pocket to spend. And the same with businesses that are borrowers. Now they go into reverse because the numbers are cooling down. And so now they're saying, okay, we can back off the brake. You know, it's, I like to use the analogy of driving the car down the road. Sometimes you put the brakes on and sometimes you put the gas pedal on. So when they drove the interest rates down at the beginning of the pandemic down to almost free, mm. they, were, they had the gas pedal shoved to the floor. I thought it was far too excessive, but they didn't ask me. And then they did what, what we all knew was going to happen, or at least I think many knew what was going to happen. They let the genie, inflation genie out of the bottle because they put too much stimulus into the system, fiscal and monetary. Inflation took off. Then they had to say, oh, 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 wait a minute. Got, got to put the brakes on. We're going too fast. That's what we were doing. We were going too fast. So what do you do when you're going too fast? You put the brakes on. We did. And they work. Brakes do work. And now they're cooling down. And so... Macklem and company, the deputy governors, um, uh, have studied the uh, the tea leaves, studied the data, and they are saying, you know, we can we can cut rates, and I agree with them completely. And they came down to, uh, and I believe that they're going to do one more rate cut this year because the numbers support it, the economic fundamentals mm. support it. So this is evidence-based decision making at the highest level by the Bank of Canada. I, I thought it was really interesting yesterday that Tiff Macklem spent some time talking about shelter costs. I, I want to play another clip here of him elaborating on shelter costs. Yeah. But shelter price yeah. inflation is still too high. It remains the biggest contributor to overall inflation, despite some early signs of easing. 
Like you said, Dr. Lee, there are a bazillion data points and trends that the bank is looking at as they're trying to make these decisions. But I'm curious right. about the inevitability of the bank's hand being forced around the housing market, considering the number of mortgage renewals that are slated to come due in the next two years. There has been some research put out in the last year or so about what some analysts call the ticking time bomb on mortgages. I'm curious how much of that may have influenced the bank's decision making as a singular data point rather than the, the broad based data points that you were talking about before. I'm, now, this is my opinion, although I'm going to ground it in a moment in some data. In my opinion, I don't think that the Bank of Canada, uh, I think Governor Macklem uh, is far too trained and experienced to allow po essentially political considerations to drive mm. economic decisions over, over fundamentals. Um, so let me just unpack that a little bit. First off, you know, there are people predicting, you know, a mortgage apocalypse and forgive me for being so contrarian and so blunt. I think they're, they're just flat out wrong. Mm. I was the mortgage manager in the 70s, early 80s when interest rates hit 20%, 20, two zero, not five or six, two zero. And everyone was predicting mortgage apocalypse, the end of time, you know, everyone's gonna lose their house. The National Mortgage Delinquency, which has been reported since the 60s by law, month by month, went from one half of 1% to exactly 1%, meaning at 99% at of Canadians were up to date, even when mortgages hit 20. What is the National Mortgage Delinquency Rate as we speak right now in Canada? It is 0.18. That means that 99.8% of Canadians are up to date. So it's one of these great urban legends. And I've heard it from, unfortunately, from OSFI, and I respect the regulators at OSFI. But if you haven't worked in a bank, in a branch, lending money to real human beings who borrow money, then you won't understand how people deal with rapidly increasing interest rates on their mortgage. I lived through it. Mm. And people would come to me who are, you know, they're making their mortgage payment and they'd lost their job. And I said, excuse me, thank you very much. I really appreciate this. But how on earth are you able to make the mortgage payment? And the rates have gone to 20. And they'd look at me and say, well, you know, mom and dad are helping. And mm -hmm. I coined the phrase the bank of mom and dad. But that's not the only, Dave, that's not the only. People don't realize this about mortgages. There's a myriad of coping strategies. You can go get a part-time job as a full-time worker. People do. You can bring in a tenant into the basement, you know, and fix up the basement and, or into a spare bedroom. You know, you, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can, uh, to, to, you know, you can sell the car and, and uh, go mass transit. So, I mean, there's all kinds of coping mechanisms and people say, oh, well, the mortgage rate went up, you know, your payment went up by uh, a double. So therefore that's it, you're doomed, you're over it, you're gonna lose your house. It doesn't work like that. In fact, the mortgage rate in our country is in 75 years has never, ever, ever gone over one nationally. Mm. So there isn't a mortgage apocalypse coming. And I think that Governor Macklem knows that because the data is very transparent. And no, I think he's, he's putting down the rates because the economy is really cooling. There's some people that say we're in a recession right now um, because it's that soft. So I think that that's what's driving him are the economic fundamentals and not the, uh, the, the fact there are some Canadians who have mortgages coming up for renewal. And remember, it's only a third of Canadians that own uh, mortgages on their house, according right. to CMHC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, two thirds of Canadians uh, don't even have mortgages. I'm one of them, by the way. So rates go up, they go down. I don't have a mortgage. <laughs> the bank I mean, what, you know what I mean? It it's not everybody that has a mortgage. Dave, one more quick point on this. Please, please. I don't want to trivialize those people who are in trouble, but overwhelmingly let me not all Canadians are in trouble the way I like to put it is the Canadians that are in trouble on mortgages are overwhelmingly young people who bought in the last five years at very very elevated prices in the mm. most expensive cities in Canada and that means the GTA that means Vancouver there's about five cities so it's not everybody everywhere in Canada of every age young people who bought a house in the last five years at the peak in the most expensive cities some of them are at risk, not all of them. Mm. So it's a subset of a subset of a subset that's at risk. And remember, when all else fails, and I used to say this to my own customers, if you really can't afford that new mor that mortgage increase that just went through the roof, you do what you people have been doing forever. List the house for sale. That's right. Tell your friends and neighbors, I didn't like this neighborhood anyways. You know, I didn't like it that much. <laughs> 
cash out on your tax, the only asset in Canada that is capital gains free, and you move somewhere else and you cash out and pay off the mortgage, which is how the, that's the ultimate takeout if you can't afford your mortgage payment increase. Dr. Lee, I, I used the word perspective right at the start of this conversation because that's precisely what you bring to the table. I like I like that you can bat away some of these narratives like we're playing a game of ping pong. That works for me. Yeah. You, in that answer, you used the word recession. D despite yeah. some of the GDP growth that was reported last yeah. week by Stats Canada, certainly the stock yeah. market is by no means a singular economic indicator or a holistic yeah. economic indicator, but it's been a darn good five years on the Canadian stock market. How would, how would you describe the economy? How would you describe the overall state of the, the Canadian economy? Because recession doesn't feel like the right word, but it certainly yes. isn't, isn't a boom either. Dave, you're absolutely correct. I'm going to use different language. Um, and this explains the paradox because there's people, your previous panel panelists, and I could tell some of them were just, you know, couldn't understand why these polls are what they are. Uh, and I say this very respectfully. Uh, I, I don't see the polling uh, at all um, as mystifying. The top two quintiles, to use the language of demography and statistics and, and economics and so forth, a quintile is 20% of the population. It's based on income. So the top 20% are the what we normally call the upper class or the rich. The next quintile is what we call the upper middle class. The third quintile is what we call the middle class. The fourth quintile is what we call the lower middle class or the working class. And the bottom quintile, we all know what we call the bottom quintile. They are the poor. Okay? So the top two quintiles, that's the upper class and the upper middle class, they're doing very, very, very well, thank you very much. And they're the ones who are, hey, crisis, what crisis? There's no crisis, to quote you, Super Trump, the rock group that I like. Uh, it's the bottom three, quint or the bottom quintile, the second quintile, and the third quintile. That's 60% of the population, by the way, because each quintile is 20%. So the people in the bottom are, are just feeling it terribly. And the people in the lower middle class are really getting hit, you know, by with affordability issues on rent, shelter, and of course food, uh, and energy, and the middle class. So it's it's a it's a bimodal economy. We have two economies inside the one economy of Canada. One economy for the top 40% who are doing extremely well. They're very high income, very affluent, and the 60% who are struggling and not doing well. And that I think explains the polls. The people who are not supporting the government are the people who are struggling and not doing well. Dr. Lee, so grateful for your time today. I know it's the start of the new school year, so uh, don't go too hard on these students the first week. Uh, give them a little bit of give them a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I will I will quote you to my students. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I used to be a traffic reporter in Ottawa, I used to say, if you're late for class today, I'll write you a note, a note from the traffic reporter to say the traffic was bad. <laughs> Dr. Lee, have a lovely day. Same to you. Thanks very much. <laughs> Dr. Ian Lee is an associate professor at Carleton's Sprott School of Business. You can catch full episodes of Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv.